What if you put a mirror in front of a mirror and then put a two-sided mirror in front of it? Would you like blow up the universe? Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to introduce you to using RealFlow 2012. So let's open up RealFlow and get to know the user interface. All right, so now every time you open up RealFlow, you're going to get to this project management panel. Now, all you have to do is select the project from your little picker right here from your recent projects, or you can make a new one. So for this, let's type in a new one. So I'll go for tutorial. Super cool Leo. Yeah, I like that. Tutorial super cool Leo. All right. And now select create a new project. Okay, congratulations, you are now in RealFlow. Okay, so first couple of rules that you guys want to understand. Uh, Alt left click, it gives you the ability to rotate around the world. Alt plus middle mouse gives you the ability to pan. And Alt right click gives you the ability to dolly in and out of the scene at your choosing. So those are the three navigation keys. You can find them also right here, these little guys. And like I said, those are your navigation keys. All right, so those are the main navigation keys, and now we'll move forward with learning the layout of the program. Here on the left side, you have these things called exclusive links. Now, we'll get into that later, but just so you know that they're there. Your nodes are going to be containing the basically the water elements or elements that are going to provide particles for real flow to calculate and use over here. Same thing goes for global links. Global links are going to be how the nodes interact with each other. And over here you have the node parameters with your layers. Let me give an example of what this looks like. Let me just create a emitter here. And uh, there you go. See how it opened up here, my nodes and my global links. Your nodes are gonna be basically your library of all the elements that RealFlow uses. And your global links are of course how they interact with each other. Uh, over here we have your node parameters. We have the uh, position, rotation, scale, the usual 3D width, whatnot. Yeah, that was a cool word. I like that. The usual what, what not. The initial state, uh, which we'll learn about later. And your particles, your type, your resolution, your density, a bunch of statistics and numbers and wiggity whatnot. So these are all your parameters. Now down here, of course, we have your layers that you might want to use later on for other projects that you need to hide it or show them as visible. But like I said, we'll get to that later on. Uh, down here we have your messages. Your messages are going to show you basically, uh, for example, if you try to make anything real flow. Let me give an example of that. Let me simulate something here. Okay. See how it's saying using eight threads for this simulation? There you go. That's because it's using eight hyper threading threads that my CPU uses. Uh, down here we have, of course, a timeline, the frame limit, and the last simulation frame. And of course, you have the simulation tools and the simulation progress. So over here also we have the uh, play stop usual buttons that you have. And over here we have the global buttons, which are used for scaling objects down to their particular size in terms of global size. And your uh, job manager and your keyframe manager and all that jazz. So there you go. That's so far for the most part the main user interface of RealFlow 5. So let's get to actually creating something and getting used to the tools. You know what would be really cool and environmentally friendly at the same time and yet awesome? Hybrid monster trucks with jet engines.